What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We are going to talk about Doc Ock. His legendary event is returning tonight, and I'm doing a guy talking about everything you need to worry about with Doc. What to invest in him in terms of T4s, his ISO class, the optimal lineups for him with Sinister Six, and honestly, what you can expect out of getting this guy unlocked. So we're going to break down all of that today, and uh, hopefully this helps you guys figure out what you need to invest in for him and what to expect out of Doc Ock. Now, in order to unlock Doc, you have to go through a legendary event that requires using your X-Force to get him. And your X-Force, honestly, you're going to gear them up anyways because they're great Alliance War characters. When I unlocked a 7-star Doc Ock, both these characters were back at tier 12 or 13. I have not thrown a lot of gear onto these three characters over here. I've just taken these Negasonic and X-23 up to tier 14. Honestly, it's uh, it's it's a little bit more gear than uh, what you usually expect for one of these legendary events. And honestly, it wasn't too hard. In the final tier for Doc Ogg with a 7-star unlock, you have to fight Ultron, but as long as you can use Cable Special to re remove his buffs and kind of remove Speed Bar on him, it's a manageable fight. I can't really give you a guideline on what the optimal power is for this. No one really knows. Casino's infographic that usually has like the uh, lowest power recorded. It says about 400k for 7-star, but I have well, over 400, well under 400k on these X-Force right now and I was able to do it pretty easily. So expect somewhere in the range of 250 to 300k power is gonna be more than adequate on your X-Force to unlock this. So you don't have to go crazy on the gear, but if you do, X-Force is a top Alliance War team anyways, so you're going to get great return on gearing up that X-Force. And of course, they are. there's a bit of a controversy right now with Domino using, uh, using Blitz Orbs to unlock her. Now, once you get Doc unlocked, you can see I've got tier 14 on him and I've got tier 14 on Electro and I have everybody else at tier 12 or lower. Honestly, Doc is one of those characters you can take up to tier 14 right away and the more gear you have on Doc, the better the team is going to be around him and this relies on his passive ability, Master Planner. Now, with this fully upgraded, he gains, uh, he is able to apply char or he's able to apply deflect and speed up to himself and adjacent allies if he is charged. Now, the one thing to note about this is the speed up buff with this is currently bugged, meaning he applies speed up to himself at the start of, the, of his turn. And then once his turn ends, the speed up expires. It's a bug. We've tagged Scopely many times about it. We've never heard anything back from them about this, but I imagine this is very much a bug and maybe one day they will finally fix the speed up issue on him. But the reason why you want to throw gear on Doc Ock over all the rest of your Sinister Six is because of what happens with the rest of his ability. On his block, he heals self and all Sinister Six allies for 10% of this character's max health, 20% in war. And in war, when this character or his chargeable Sinister Six ally drops below 20% health, fill that character's speed bar by 100% and clear heal block. In war, in war, he gains 15% damage and chargeable Sinister Six allies gain 15% damage as well. Him and Sinister Six allies gain 20% block chance they also all gain 40% max health and a massive resistance against offense down. This really kind of gives you a bit of a power to the uh, to the Sinister Six and kind of makes them like a soft counter to Ebony Maw's mechanics. Ebony Maw's special puts defense up on his team and offense down on the enemy team. With Doc there, you can't land offense down on his team. So this is, uh, this is very good for when you're fighting teams that can give a lot of offense down. This counters it. But all this together means that, especially this blocking and the healing, that means that you're a very powerful Doc Ock on your team is going to kind of carry things because your usual counter for defeating Doc Ock and his team is to go for Doc. And if you can't go for Doc and you can't kill him, he's just going to start blocking. He's going to heal things. So he's uh, his very powerful with that. And obviously you want the T4 on the passive. It gives 15% bonus damage. It's very important for war. And the other T4 I have on him is for Sinister Recharge because of what it does here it applies plus three charge but also the main summon that you want to go for here is going to be shocker now the list that they have here is the order in which he will summon the sinister six allies so ideally you don't want shocker on your team so that he can summon a shocker on his own vulture rhino green goblin mysterio in order are the rest of the summons and also depending on what t4s you have invested and what gear level you have invested in this character that's also going to be the T4s and gear level of the summon you have as well. The usual standard rule for some of these summon abilities. Dark Phoenix has the same rule with her and Phoenix. 
So if you have the T4 on the special here and you summon Shocker, it's going to give him this offense up to self for two turns and all Sinister Six allies. This is a very big deal. This is why you have that T4 on him. Those are the only T4s you really need to worry about with Doc. His ultimate superior villain, it's just a damage boost with this, but flipping and prolonging negative effects, you don't need to worry about that T4 because you already get that at level 6 of the ability. And the basic attack is just a bonus damage there as well. So the only two T4s you need to go for on him are his special and his passive. And that's all you need to go for for him. In terms of his ISO class, healer is the way to go, obviously. The more that he blocks, the more he heals. And if you boost this with healer, he's going to heal more often, increases his active healing. He's also able to apply a lot of regenerations at the same time. So healer class on him is really the only one you really want to go for. You could make a you could make an argument for going for like a uh, skirmisher for the bonus focus raider because he has a lot of he has that AOE attack with his ultimate. But honestly, healer is what I see everybody put on him. I don't really see anybody else use any other ISO classes on him. Healer is all you need to worry about for Doc. Now, once you have Doc unlocked, the optimal lineup for him is going to be Electro, Mysterio, and then you kind of choose from there. Green Goblin works great because of his passive with the constantly dispelling uh, positive effects on the enemy team because everyone in Sister Six is Spider-Verse characters. Rhino is great for defense, especially if you're gonna be using or fighting with teams that you have blind on them. Rhino will be able to counter that. Shocker, I don't bother with. Vulture is another good character. Swarm is pretty good as well. Swarm is really only usable under Doc Ox, so you kinda, you kinda gotta use them together if you're gonna use them at all. But honestly, Mysterio is a no-brainer because he applies deflect to the team at the start of the fight. He gives bonus focus to the team. You kind of you kind of mix and match. I'd say definitely these four here. Vulture, if you have a very powerful Vulture, Vulture works. If you have a very powerful Rhino, Rhino, Rhino also works. Same thing with Swarm. You kind of choose who you want to use in that fifth slot, but definitely use these top three within a Sinister Six team. Now, with that being said, let's talk Arena. Doc is a very powerful counter to Black Order teams within uh, within Arena, and you're going to see a lot of Black Order teams out there these days. Everybody's using Black Order. And if you want to go check out Mobile Gamer's video on Doc Ock and using him with Symbiotes, you can use Doc Ock with Symbiote Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, Carnage, and either, I believe, Scream. And honestly, that team can punch up 100k against Black Order. It's a very solid counter to Black Order within Arena. It, it's great. It's uh, it's what people have commented that they used to beat my Black Order in Arena. So uh, whatever allows you to help kind of punch up against those Black Order teams, if you don't have a solid Black Order team of your own, Doc is going to help you kind of fill in that gap here in Arena. It's a great option for that. You can't go wrong with him plus Symbiotes. It's a great, it's a great team. Recommend you guys go check out Mobile Gamer's video on that. There's a link to it down below in the video description. Definitely a worthwhile thing to check out if you're trying to like, if you're struggling against those Black Order teams in Arena. Now, outside of that, Sinister Six with Doc, very powerful, uh, very powerful Blitz team. Uh, they're one of my better Blitz teams in terms of power, and I very, very rarely lose with this team on Blitz Sim. They're, uh, they're, they're just that good. So uh, they're a great Blitz team. Don't really need to go into detail with that. You'll, they will not let you down in Blitz Sim. But the real power of this team is going to be Alliance War. And that should really be no surprise, considering all the buffs you saw that Sinister Six get for War with Doc. The important thing to note is that all those bonuses are for War in general. So you can use them on offense, you can use them on defense. The general rule is to use them on defense because that's constant healing, sustainability, the blocking. If you boost that Doc Ock team, Plus Mysterio on there. That's a lot of stacks of deflect going on that team. It will make them a very powerful team to fight against. There's a lot of healing going on. And there are very few counters to them on defense. The ones I can think of off the top of my head are Black Order, uh, X-Force, and it looks like Skill Military is also going to be a counter to Doc Ock. That one is still kind of sketchy. We're still trying to test that out and optimize that. But the chances are looking pretty good that this new Skill Military team is also going to be a counter to Doc Ock for Alliance War. So they don't have a lot of strong counters out there. There is also, you can use Baron Zemo with Supernatural and you can punch across with that. 
but that one's still kind of sketchy because you have to rely on the debuffs landing it's not a, it's not as easy as the other teams so that one that's another counter but i'm not really sold on the reliability of that supernatural team even with zemo thrown in there so they're one of the premier defense teams they're up there with emma they're up there with Black Order. They're up there with Avengers in terms of the top defensive teams that you're going to find in Alliance War. You can't go wrong with putting them on defense, but they do not do not discount their power for offense either. They are one of the easiest ways to counter Black Order in Alliance War, able to punch up very significantly against Black Order teams. So if you find a defensive Black Order and you have your Sinister Six for offense, you can punch up a good 50k at least with Black Order again, or sorry, with Sinister Six against that Black Order team. But you need to make sure that you have Green Goblin on the team. Without Green Goblin on the team, you cannot constantly strip the buffs from the enemy team. He's he's really what kind of drives them. He's the power behind them. So you need Mysterio and Green Goblin together. That one-two punch of the bonus focus with Mysterio, plus that constant dispelling with Green Goblin and Spider-Verse allies, that really kind of limits the capabilities of that black order team really kind of weakens them but it makes them one of the best counters to black order outside of mirror matches and possibly even emma against black order defense teams and alliance war so you are getting a pretty pretty strong team here with sinister six now if this is one it, you're probably wondering is this a character you should chase honestly at this point Unless you're really going for endgame, I would say Doc Ock is not a necessary character. There's no there's no legendaries that require Doc Ock to unlock. Now, Sinister Six can be used to unlock Invisible Woman and Shuri, and I've mentioned that in my new player's farming guide. But this is also one that you don't have to have. It is a character you're also going to get used for in Dark Dimension. But again, Dark Dimension is very much an endgame kind of mode. In fact, every if you go and look for Dark Dimension 4, everybody is using Doc Ock in the Legendary Nodes. So if you go up here to the Legendary Nodes, you're going to see the teams Doc Ock, Doc Ock, Doc, Doc. Everybody's using Doc here in the Legendary Nodes. The sustainability with him, the healing, the regenerations, he's just so good. He's so tanky and he has so much healing on hand. It's it's just easy to use him for uh, for Dark Dimension. So you will get used for him there. In fact, I even used him in my city nodes for Dark Dimension 3 on my first run before I ended up gearing up my symbiotes and just used them to auto my timed run for DD3. So you will get used for him in Dark Dimension as well. Very good character. Not necessary for you to have unless you're really pushing into that end game kind of content. This is a character you can very much pass on. But I do recommend that you guys try to get him soon because he's just good. He's very good. Sinister Six is an easy team to get as a beginner player. And once you get Doc Ock, well, you're going to be pretty good there. You're going to have another strong team on your hand. So if you guys have questions about Doc Ock, feel free to ask them down below in the comments section. I'll be sure to help you guys out with anything, any questions you guys have on that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time